Hi, I'm the Accidental Brewer, and today we're going to check in on the yeast experiment that I performed. Now, for anybody who's not familiar, this is starter yeast versus um, sprinkled on yeast. And I'm not necessarily looking for the fastest fermentation or for things to have a significant distance in time. I'm more looking for does it have an effect on flavor? Does it have an effect on uh, the character of the honey um, or anything like that that's put inside of it? And so, as a reminder, all of these use the same um, honey. Uh, it's a mixture of wildflower and orange blossom because I ran out of um, wildflower. Uh, it is, all of them went up to 1.1 or 1.11 um, for their gravity. And so today, it's, it was um, the 24th of uh, January when I started this, and it is now March 2nd, 2021, so 24th of January, 2021, March 2nd, 2021. So they've been going for um, a little bit over a month. I'm just going to check, see if they need to be racked. I'm prepared for the racking. Um, and if they do, then I'll rack them over to new bottles. If not, I'll clean everything up and put them back. <laughs> um, and we'll probably rack them again on a different day. But I'm going to start with the um, EC118 yeast. And so this is the starter. And this is the um, EC118 um, sprinkled. So all the starters are in the back, I think. Yep, all the starters are in the back. EC118, Lawton 71B, and Red Star Premier Blanc. Now I did realize I need to taste these, and I've forgotten a very important thing. And I have a uh, sniffer. Uh, of for each one. So I have this that says Southern Distilling on it, um, in, and then just a regular Glen Cairn. Um, and uh, so when I take a, you know, sampling of each, I can pour a snifter and then I can kind of talk about whether or not it's ready, um, depending on where I get, if I get that far. So I'm prepared. Now let's dig in. All right. Also, everything that's here has been sanitized. Uh, I sanitized it before I set it down, sprayed sanitizer all over everything, dumped it in sanitizer for about five minutes each. Um, so, and behind me, I sanitized all the, all the surfaces, things like that with some star sand. Even the stove. Still kind of murky. But I don't know if that means that there's still honey in here or what. We'll find out here in a minute. It may become clear after I do this that there is still a very, there's a lot of honey left in some of these. All right. So this is at one dot. Zero four, so ten forty, um, which means that it's probably it's eaten through about six points of gravity. Um, it looked like it was still bubbling, so looking to see what the OG was one dot one one. So it's, yeah, it's eaten through about six points of gravity. Um, I don't think that that is probably uh, ready yet, so I'm going to pour this back in. And, but I want to get a little taste just to see where it's at as far as you know, if this is making any difference. All right. I'm going to go sanitize this really quick to make sure everything's above board. And go ahead and take off the cap. Set that in my little pool of sanitizer that I have over here. And let's get the hydrometer down in there. Well, let's see uh, 
and see what this turns out. Interesting. The EC one one eight sprinkle has gone completely dry, um, or it's almost dry. You just make sure it's not stuck on the side or something. Uh, so it's gone down to one dot. 0, 0.15, so 10.15 um, is what I would call that. Interesting. I don't think it's, I don't think it's ready to go either. So pour off just a little bit so I can do an A-B comparison. Now these should essentially taste the same. Um, so what I expect is there'll be no appreciable difference other than honey uh, in them. <laughs> And I've still got a whole thing full of honey, um, full of my uh... All right. so definitely not going to put these guys in different containers yet. So let's see, let's see what they taste like. First, we'll start with the starter. Strong alcohol flavor. Um, I think it's probably about 7% ABV, maybe 6% ABV right now. But there is a very strong honey and alcohol flavor. The, um, there's some nice citrus notes in there, though. And aside from the honey not being as full and it being a little bit more, I guess, thin, they almost as effectively taste the same. Um, you can tell that this one's sweeter, definitely, but they have basically the same honey characteristics. I am going to take a palate cleansing sip of coffee. And I'm going to try that second one again, just in case it was affected by the flavor. Yeah, I mean, this one is definitely sweeter. It's almost cloyingly sweet, so it still needs to set for a bit. As a matter of fact, I might mix the... Um, yeast and stuff back up in there just to see if I can get it to kind of kick back up in. But both of them should be going pretty well. Um, so just to see if I can get some um, more action going in this because they essentially should have the same thing. Okay. I do like the flavor of both of them. This one I think I prefer a little bit. It's a little drier. has a little bit better mouthfeel. Um, it still needs something. I have a plan to put uh, two of these on oak and then spice two of them. So basically make a methaglin. Um, out of two and then spice them and see what ends up happening. My suspicion is that if those two weren't done, 
then neither of these will be done. But we'll see. Um, so let's start with the Lawden 71B yeast and see where that one's at. Now this is the starter again. So this one is at 1.02, so that's 1020 for anybody that's keeping track. Um, yeah, and, uh, it's not completely ready yet, so somewhere in between the other two, but closer to the, I think I poured a little bit too much of this back in here. a little bit. That's just a party foul. Uh, All right, so this one's at like 1.25. <laughs> They're essentially the same thing. Um, within half a point of gravity. <sighs> so why am I not worried about pouring this just right back in? Um, well, it's, you know, 150, 250 milliliters is about a glass of, you know, wine or something like that. Um, but it also has uh, been sanitized. It came just from this vessel and went right back in. So there's nothing that I'm adding or taking away that I'm concerned about. Um, like I'm not, I'm not worried about introducing things that shouldn't be in there or something like that. Okay. It's young, it's got a little bit of heat, but it's very subtle. Um, take a palate cleansing sip of coffee. They, they're the same. I can't tell the difference between the two. Now this one has some different esters and flavors in it compared to the other one. The other one was more, um, had more like herbal tastes, I guess a lot of flowery tastes. Um, this, both of these have less mouthfeel also. They're more, um, like the citrus is a little bit more forward. And they coat the tongue a little bit differently. They feel less watery, 
um, at a lower, at the higher ABV. Thin might be the right word. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not, um, I'm not really telling the difference between the two. This feels more citrusy, for sure. Or this feels more citrusy, for sure. I don't know. I, the, there's very slight differences between the EC118 and the Lawton 71D that I think is attributed more to yeast. Um, but they appear to be um, no difference in flavor or I mean maybe even speed of fermentation. Now I have these in a dark closet where it's kept at around um, 68 to 70 degrees in temperature and um, you know they've all been given the same uh, yeast nutrients and and everything so I'm not I'm not seeing a big difference between the two. All right, well, put these away and then sanitize my equipment and then get the last set. All right, on for the last set. <laughs> and uh, this is the Premier Blanc from Red Star. Um, we're just gonna hop right into it. I expect this one was pretty you know, active. I don't think that it's ready yet, but I expect that it'll be fairly close. This one is dry, so I will be transferring it today and seeing what I need to do to adjust it, if anything. So I might put this one on oak, but it went down to 1.0. Just want to stick near the side of the It's like 1.002 or something like that. Just above 1.0. So we'll see how this ends up tasting. That definitely uh, blows my theory that the packets that I got from this set that have been at my house for some time because I thought they were bad, were bad. Um, clearly, I just didn't the last thing that I made that this just didn't turn out well for some other environmental reason. All right. Now, to go wash some things out and see if I'm gonna be moving over to the second one. All right, so now for the second. The uh, sprinkle version. It sprinkles. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just kind of, anything I come up with for entertainment, mostly to entertain myself. I don't like to be bored.
definitely have a very different smell from the other two. The other were more sweet smelling. This one has more of like a, a funky smell. And it looks like it's gone down to the same amount. It's like 1.002 or something like that. It's very close to 1.0. Um, so I think that means that we will uh, move over to racking both of these guys over. Now let's see, let's see what they taste like. You know what, I'm gonna get a sip of that palate cleansing coffee again. Now, let's see. I'm not sure I like that. Um, it's very thin and a lot of the honey character is, it seems like it's gone. There is some perceived sweetness from the honey. Um, it's not terrible, but it definitely needs like an acid blend or something. There's some of the citrus still left. So let's take another sip. Yeah, it's essentially the same. Now I'm sure that if I put this on oak, add a citrus blend, add some tannin powders, leave it for a little bit, they're gonna be fine. I'm almost tempted to bust out one of my bottling buckets, put this in a bottling bucket together and see what it does, but I think that would ruin the experiment because I wanna see like all the way up to bottling, um, how this might affect the flavor, which I don't think it does. I, I mean, the only thing that I, I can see, well, you know what? Scratch that. Let me start over. So I think at this point with the Red Star, what I've shown is that it is, there is no appreciable difference between doing it with a starter and sprinkle. They, if all things are considered equal, you add the same um, nutrients, you have the same yeast, you do the same stuff, they're going to come to the same point, especially if you just look in ferment. Now, one may move faster than the other, but wine making, especially meat making, is about patience because generally your product at the beginning is not wonderful. It's over time that it gets better unless it's at a lower ABV. But this is going to be somewhere around 15, 16%. And I think this is an 18% gravity um, yeast. So what I might do is actually add some more orange blossom honey to this once I get it into a bucket and see how that, um, see if the, the yeast eats through that again. I'm not going to, I'm going to rack it over, of course. Um, and I said bucket, but I meant um, fermenter. And I'll probably be using this fermenter since I'm going to add more honey to it. Um, and then I think I may add some citrus, some acid blend, and some tannin powder, and a couple other things to, well, I should wait till the end to add the acid blend, but I'll probably add some tannin powder uh, to this uh, to bring up some of that um, tannic property that needs to be there for the astringency. So, um, yeah, gonna do that now. <laughs> so, hold on for one moment. just because I want to make sure that um, I get the honey mixed in before I move it over to here. So I'm gonna do this one first, the sprinkle, get a bottling bucket, I'll be right back. What I think I'm going to do is add half a pound of honey, so about eight ounces of honey to this. And I'm gonna use the Florida Sweet Squeeze. Um, and the reason I wanna do that is I think it will be nice probably uh, and give it a little bit more of the nice uh, flavors that I'm looking for, for at around 
um, 10, 15, um, which this would be, and it'll also give me a little bit more control over whether or not um, this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll give me a little bit more control over whether or not I want to add more honey later. So that is 8.3 ounces. That's uh, good enough for me. And let me get my cell phone. One of these. I think the yeast cake on this is a little interesting. It's kind of like a cloudy mess <laughs> down in there. Um, and it goes, it, I've never seen these um, red stars do this before because they kind of create like a weird yeast cake that goes up the thing. So well, I'll be back in a few minutes to show you how this moves over and then clear the Clearly there's still a little bit of yeast and stuff like that in there. So we'll see what ends up happening. So moved into this vessel. This vessel has my uh, stirring stick about to go into it. And I'm just going to mix this up uh, to make sure that the honey gets integrated fairly well. Um, I don't really want to introduce a lot of air into this. So I'm just trying to introduce the honey. Um, it's still got a lot of gas in it, so um, I'm not as worried about creating vinegar because I don't I don't think that the bacteria that cause vinegar can live at 15-16% uh, ABV, uh, which is about what this would be. Uh, but I'm more concerned about like oxygenation causing issues with. Um, like a cardboardy taste. So I'm more worried about the flavor than I am vinegar, vinegarization, I guess. Um, so I'm trying not to introduce a lot of oxygen. I'm going, just going very slow um, and not like adding to this uh, as far as like oxygenation goes and things like that. Um, I'm trying to get the honey mixed up really good in here. So there still is a, a little bit left at the bottom. So I want to make sure I get all of that um, added appropriately, mixed thoroughly, without while adding as little oxygen as possible, which is very difficult to do. All right, let's uh, let's see what the gravity is. take a little bit more out just so I can actually reach the uh, reach it spin it around be able to see it so that raised it up to 1 to 1020 essentially it's like 1022 you know, or something like that. Uh, but that raised it up. Um, let's see what it tastes like. Real quick. It 
and definitely gave it more honey flavor and character. The youngness of the alcohol is still there, but I feel like this is a this is going in the right direction. So oh, I should not do that. That raised it up to 1.02, um, probably 1.022, because uh, it's right there below the line. Um, it get, definitely gave it back more of the honey flavor that I'd be looking for while still keeping it kind of dry, which is what I like. Um, if you think about like a Riesling or something like that, or even um, uh, a less sugary wine, um, that's kind of what it what it ends up being like. Um, it's not unpleasant, and uh, I rather like it. So I can pick up all of this now. Just put it down to the bottom. transfer it and be back in a minute. All right, we've got that transferred over. Um, we added uh, 0.022 uh, or 0 0.02 um, gravity to the, to the fermenter. And now we're gonna move on to the other yeast sprinkle. I also added um, four grams of, which I need to write down, I also added four grams, uh, or not four grams, what am I saying? Four, um, uh, one half of a teaspoon of tannin powder to this to increase its hopefully tannic properties. Ah, right here, here's the pen. One point, oh dear. We'll move this back over here, and now it's time for me to add to the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, set this back down, just because you know sometimes I do things wrong. All right, so set that over there. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, honey to the bottling bucket, or to the uh, transfer bucket that I'm using. Um, it's got a little bit of scar sand down the bottom, so I'm just going to kind of wipe that off to get some of that out. Um, just because I don't really, I mean, it's not going to hurt the brew, but I don't really want that in my brew. And I'm also going to go ahead and add the tannin powder to this. All right, let's see what the gravity is on this and see what we, uh, what we can see. is essentially the same. It's 1.20 oh, 
two, I'm going to call it. So I added about 20 points of gravity to this one also. Um, and that's good. All right, so let me just write that down on here. All right, um, there we go. And we're done for today. <laughs> um, so just to recap, uh, we tested all the yeast starter, yeast sprinkle yeast, um, uh, yeast experiment brews that I did. Um, only two of them, the Red Star Premier Blanc had run through the, the um, existing points of gravity uh, and, and gotten down to dry. And so I added some more um, uh, honey to each, uh, about 0 0.02 points of gravity. Uh, or not 0 0.02, more about two points of gravity, uh, which brought them up to one dot to 1020 essentially each. Um, at this point, I'm going to put them all back in the closet. And we're going to see what goes on. So we'll be back for another check in on this group later. We really do appreciate you watching us. Watching us? We really appreciate you watching us. We really appreciate you watching us. Um, we have a Patreon and a Twitter and an Instagram. Um, and we'd love for you to engage for engage with us there. Uh, we also would like for you to you know subscribe and hit the bell if you like this content. Um, give us some feedback on what you see and what you think. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.